Welcome to part 8 of Tracing Without Tears. In the last video we showed you how to do point editing and in this video I'm going to show you how you would apply that to tracing challenges. Now here's a fairly common situation where we have a coloring book style image that we want to trace. Now you know I've been telling you to turn off the high pass filter and use the threshold. Now that you've learned all the rules it's okay to break them. When you have a coloring book image like this and you can see that the default settings will give you the results you're looking for. In other words, all the black is covered in yellow. Then we'll just use this trace. Now if you recall from our line art video, our next step would be to release the compound path and then to click towards the outside so that we can select that outer shape and pull it apart. Okay, when we do that you'll see that we have some double lines here that indicate a problem. So I'm going to put this back in position and I'll, when I zoom in you'll see that we have a break in the line which is causing this. The break here in the line drawing causes the double lines and we need to fix this situation by closing up this gap. So I'm going to zoom in as far as I can go and you'll remember we double clicked to go into point edit mode. I'm going to click a new point on the line that I can use to break the path. So I can break the path by going over to the panel and I know that the upper portion is going to stay put because it was highlighted in red. I'm just going to drag this down to make a gap so that I can connect this line. So the next thing I want to do is I want to break the path here and I'm going to move that to where the red snaps together. And then I just need to clean up these joints a little bit. I can do that by, okay that has a corner point, so I'm going to go back, I'm going to make that a smooth point, and then smooth it out. This one is a corner also, so I can't move that around and fix the loop that way, so I'm also going to click smooth on that. And then I can move this where I want it to clean up and join the two together. We'll need to select this outer piece that we just worked on, release compound path, and now when we drag it out of the way it gives us the outline we want. But I want to look at this trace one more time because there's a couple of easier ways to do this without point editing. And I know some of you enjoy point editing. I particularly don't, so I'm always looking for ways to do this an easier way. Again, zoom all the way in. Take your polygon tool and draw a polygon that bridges the gap. Then select both pieces, modify, weld. And now when we release compound path we can pull that outline out like that. We can see that, that outline is unbroken. If we go back and look at this one more time there's one more technique we can use if you have the designer edition and that is to use the eraser tool and instead of using break path we would just use the eraser click it, then then move the, the red dots together and we'd be done. So you don't often have to use point editing even when you have a break in the line. Now there are lots of situations where you need to do a manual trace because the auto trace just doesn't work on the image you have. For instance, I have a photograph here with not very much contrast and not very defined lines. We as humans are much better in this case of seeing where the outlines are than the auto trace is. If I were to auto trace this for I really can't get anything that looks like the sil silhouette that I'm after. So what I'm going to do is manually trace this. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the, the freehand tool and I'm going to start and just go along the outline as closely as I can 
just slowly and carefully and this is my rough trace because I'm going to go back in and node edit all of this but this just gives me a, a way to get started and you don't have to be perfect here and then it'll come back around. Okay, when you get to the end, it'll it'll fill in if you have your default set to that. What I like to do is go to the Fill, Advanced Options, and then bring my transparency way down so that I can still see what I'm trying to trace. And I like to get that line out of the way, so I'm going to set the line color to none. Okay, now I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to zoom way in and I'm going to begin adjusting these and adding new points going along and just using everything I know about node editing to to make a nice tight trace in here and smooth these out. You have to be very careful because since we don't have layers and we don't have lock, if you click on that picture, it's going to move. So you want to keep your undo key handy for this. Anyway, this is a time-consuming process, as you might imagine, but you go through and just work at it as you, as you can, as you have the patience for. And I'll show you that I've jumped ahead on this and show you what it's going to look like. Okay, so I've gone ahead here and finished the boy and traced around the girl and done the point editing to move close and I've got it pretty much how I like it. And just to show you, I've copied that down here and there's what they would look like in silhouette. And I can keep cleaning that up to the extent that I want the detail and that I have patience for. And this is a good example where the point editing tools really come in handy and you have a, an image that's much easier to manually trace using the drawing tools and your point editing than what you could do with your auto trace. So I hope this helps you understand how to use point editing along with tracing to get your own images into Silhouette Studio so that you can cut them. Thanks for watching.